We'd like to welcome one of the best artists around, not only visually, but culturally, Stephen Paul Judd, one of my friends from the Choctaw Nation. Hello, and welcome back. We're so glad you're here with us today, and we've got some special things happening. First, we're gonna start off with uh, Stephen Judd, one of our favorite people. But later on, we're gonna have a presentation by the NWA Space, How to Sun Daggers. And then we're gonna have later on tonight, a movie, Movie Night at Mona. It's the Pearl Carter Scott, a daredevil who dared to dream, the youngest Native American female pilot. And that's presented by the Chickasaw Nation. But first, we're gonna have a TED Talk style inspiration about art with Stephen Paul Judd, one of my favorite people around and one of the greatest artists you will ever see, I promise. His stuff is amazing. He created our logo here for our shirts. He created the little Tusker and our other things that you see, <laughs> whatever all that is. <laughs> Stephen, how you doing? I'm good, thank you, thank you. Good to see you. All right, good seeing you. Thank you so much. Well, and inspire us. Yes, let's hope so. Um, yeah, so I thought I'd just take you through today of all the things that I like to make and do and what got me started on this journey. So as we start off, I'm going to first start us out. Let me share the screen with you. Let me know. Did that share? Yes, it did. Okay, excellent. Okay, so let me just figure out how I can uh, work. We're going to be right back. How I'm able to work this. Hold on. Okay, so we'll watch this little quick video. I, I, I've always loved um, film, but what happened was when I was little, I was born in Oklahoma, we moved to Mississippi, and I lived on like 19 acres in the country. And I guess my dad's dad was like really super religious, and he thought the TV was the devil, so we didn't have a TV. So I had told it when I was younger, so I was in the kindergarten, and I had a surgery on my leg so I could walk, and there was a TV. And I said, what is that? And they said, that's TV. So they turned it on, and a movie called Wizard of Oz was playing. So as you remember, Wizard of Oz started off in black and white, and then it turned into color. So I saw the invention of TV, black and white and color, like in 20 minutes. So I was freaking out. And then these monkeys came out and started flying. And I started crying. And I told them to turn it off. And I thought that it was the devil. And so I went home, and I told my brothers and sisters, there's this thing called TV. Mom and dad been holding out on us, so we we bugged and we 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 just told them, it's like fine. My parents they didn't care, like they're all right, so they bought us a TV. But what was really funny is they bought us a black and white TV, and every well, this crowd probably holds them show. It was it was not uncommon to have a black and white TV at, at one time. But the thing was, there was a show called Incredible Hulk, and like and I didn't know about cartoons or comics, so I didn't know about the Incredible Hulk except for TV. And my cousin came to visit. He's like, I'm gonna be an Incredible Hulk. I'm gonna get mad and turn green. I was like, what? The Incredible Hulk's green? Because it was that black and white TV. I thought it just got big and muscle. <laughs> All right. So I know I talked kind of fast. So I'll, I'll try to explain what I was saying on there. Let's see, let me, I gotta move. In order to reach down here and present, I gotta move this. Okay. So um, what it was saying was I didn't have television when I was a kid. I didn't even, I've never even heard of TV. I saw it when I was in a hospital for the first time. So we finally got TV. And if you would have told me at a young age that I thought that television was helping shape my identity, I would have thought that was psychobabble. It was only when I got older and started thinking about the shows that I liked and images that I wanted to see that I kind of realized that it was having an effect on me. So... When I was growing up, there was only three guys on TV that looked what I felt looked like my family. And it was these three guys here. Um, so if we start here on top, that's Iron Eyes Cody. And it's, it's, it's weird to think of now, but when I was a kid, adults littered so bad they had to make a PSA telling adults not to throw trash on the ground. So it was nothing just be driving along and have someone have a thing at McDonald's and just throw it out the window when I was growing up. So they had that, but of course, as we find out later, Iron Ice Cody was a, an actor, a Sicilian actor, Italian. Um, then we have to the right, at least my right on my screen is um, Jay Silverheel. He was an actor and um, 
a show called The Lone Ranger, which I think probably came out in the 50s, but it was reruns, but he spoke in kind of a pigeon English, white men speaking with pork and tongue kind of talk. And then the other guy, he's not native, and he doesn't claim to be, I think he's Puerto Rican actually, but that's Eric Estrada. He was on a show called Chips. But I used to watch Chips because I thought he looked like my uncle. So I was like, oh man, this guy looks like someone from my family on TV. So just the idea of seeing someone brown, and even if they were speaking pigeon English or I didn't, I, I was so hungry to see someone that looked like someone from my family on TV. I had watched stereotype stuff. So I thought, man, one day when I get older, I'm going to make things that are made that look just like other things, but they're made for native people. So it'd be a television show or it'd be art or comic books, just things that I considered cool and pop culture, but I wanted to speak to a little bit of what the, um, um, the his, not history may be the wrong word, but what I saw growing up, you know, it really spoke to what I saw growing up and our experiences growing up. So one of the first things I drew, I painted, was this, um, my sister, she really liked the Care Bears, so I painted this powwow bear for that um, Care Bear stare. Then one of the next things I did was Fry Bread and Spam by Dr. Sue because, you know, I grew up eating fry bread and I grew up eating Spam. I thought, well, how can I do a funny kid's book with that same vibe? So this is what I made. Um, then, you know, that magic eight ball you shake and you ask it a question. I made this. This is the uh, She's Your Cousin. You shake it up and you can ask it a question. I think the real ones say stuff like ask later. All signs point to yes. So I actually took that painting and then I found a way to have it physically made into a real product. So that's what you see there. That was a real product that I used to sell on, there's the, there it is, on my, um, on my little website, studis.com, exit through the gift shop. <laughs> Let's see. Oh, this was a Pow Wow Ranger that I painted, which the Power Ranger was kind of big when I was growing up. And I think they're having a resurgence. So this was an acrylic painting. This was, um, this was made in response to when I was growing up, and I think even still today, whenever they say, oh, we're going to talk about Native history this week. This week is Native history. They always start when Columbus gets here. And I was like, dude, you know, uh, Native history didn't begin in 1492. You know, we was here before that. We had um, complex trade systems and trade routes and um, inventions. So that's why I made this little sticker here. This was um, based off of the Morton Salt logo. I am Kiowa and Choctaw from Oklahoma. And when you think, if you're not sure anything about the Kiowa people, if you close your eyes and think about a native person, a lot of people will think about someone in buckskin riding horses, living in teepees. Well, that's what the Kiowas did. So you'd be right there. However, I'm also Choctaw and they were farmers and they were trading textiles even before 1490, you know, with the French, they were trading textiles and metals. And um, so they had cotton. They were wearing cotton clothing. So this is a traditional Choctaw dress. Um, I incorporated, they have um, the, the diamond pattern, which is from the Diamondback Rattlesnake. So I just took the Morton Salt logo and put a Choctaw dress on her just so I could show that it's not always buckskins and leathers, but there's other traditions out there that are rich and beautiful. These were a pair of shoes that I made. Um, I just had this idea that I wanted to see these native pictures on shoes. So I went to a comic book store and I said, hey, do you have any comic books with Native Americans? And they said, uh, no, we don't have anything like that. So I thought, okay, what about Long Ranger? They say, we've got Long Ranger. So I bought about five Long Ranger comic books and I cut them up and I glued them and put them on the shoe. So you could make these too, but I wore it one time and then you pretty much only get like one wear out of them because they're kind of glued to a shoe. Um, these are some shoes I made. Um, some of you may recognize both of these guys. Some of you may recognize one of these guys. Some of you may recognize none of these guys. But the man on the right, at least my right on my screen, is Jim Thorpe. He was voted in 1950 the world's greatest athlete in the world. Um, that picture is a famous picture of him because if you see the full size picture, you'll see that he's only he's wearing mismatched shoes. 
So what happened was Jim was in the pentathlon at the Olympics. He was down to his final event. Someone stole his shoes. So he found one on top of a locker and the other one he was able to find in a trash can and he doubled up his socks because one of them was too big. Now in this pentathlon, this was the last event. So all he had to do was out of seven people, he had to come in sixth place. So he just had to beat one person and he was going to win the Olympic gold. Um, in these mismatched shoes, he actually ended up winning first. He, he took first in the race. Gold medal winner, played. he was the first president of the NFL. Everyone knows about the NFL, but a lot of people don't realize that the first president of the NFL was a native person. So that was Jim Thorpe. Jim Thorpe um, was the best athlete in 1950, according to the Associated Press. He beat Babe Ruth by like 70% of the votes. Somehow between 1950 and 2000, when they voted again, Babe Ruth jumped over Jim Thorpe, even though he wasn't alive and their exploits were in the 30s and 20s. So how that happened, I don't know. That's probably up for debate, but he got jumped even after they stopped playing sports for somehow. The, guy, the other guy on the left, that's Billy Mills of Lala Lakota. Um, oh, and Jim Thorpe is um, Sack and Fox and uh, Potawatomi, I believe from Oklahoma. And Billy Mills is an Olympian. He won the Olympics in the 10K. I believe to this day, he's the only American, not just only native, but the only American to ever win the 10K. If you Google Billy Mills Olympic run on YouTube, I promise you it will give you chills. This guy is, it's such an amazing, amazing, amazing race. I would love for you to check that out. He's a, they made a movie about him starring Robbie Benson. Um, so Jim Thorpe, and Billy Bills both went to Haskell, which is located in Kansas. I also went to Haskell. They both have Olympic gold medals and I got perfect attendance in the second grade. So go Haskell, we have nothing but winners up there. Let's see. Oh, these are res Pez. I, I really, I collect um, Pez dispensers. And so I just wanted to make my own. So I made these res Pezes. Um, I think they shoot out little blocks of cheese when you pull the head back. So I call this the Indian that saved Christmas. So I'm a big fan of stop motion, which we're going to see in a little bit. I'm going to show you some stop motion videos that I made. Uh, and the reason I love stop motion, um, really now especially, is because you're only, to shoot a movie you need a lot of people, but to do stop motion you just need you and a cell phone and a free app and you can make any story you want it's just you're up to your imaginations at this point you can use action figures so when i was growing up there was a show called um, rudolph and it would play every year and it was a stop motion i was enamored by it. i just thought it was so neat how did they do this and when i figured out what was going on i used to make little stop motions with a notebook you draw a picture and let it flip through so uh, this is one of the early things that i one of the early photoshop mashups that i actually made you may not know this, but there was actually a native person on the $5 bill. It was a $5 silver certificate. It's a beautiful piece of artwork, I feel. Um, so um, I don't know if many of you know the history of Andrew Jackson, who's on the $20 bill. But if you are an indigenous person, just so you know, that guy had no love for you or your ancestors. Um, he was largely responsible for the Indian Removal Act, the Dawes Act. Um, Anyway, he just wasn't a fan of Native people, so I don't think he deserves to be on $20 bill, so I used to draw all my money. What you're looking at here are actual um, drawings using pen and colored pencils. There's no Photoshop in this. This is actually drawing on real money. I did these so long ago, I was back then a, a quote-unquote starving artist, and um, I actually spent most of those. I Eventually, you got to eat, so I took them in and bought stuff with those. This is a mural that I did in downtown Los Angeles at a place affectionately known as Indian Alley. As a lot of you know, there was another removal, there were a lot of removals going on where they put, took natives to cities such as Los Angeles, Seattle, um, Chicago, Minneapolis. And it was, a, I guess it was an attempt to get natives jobs in these bigger cities. So in Los Angeles, a lot of the natives hung out a place at a place that was called Indian Alley. Um, it wasn't this kind of the Skid Row area of LA, but now it's, um, it's, it's revitalized, I guess. But one kind of famous thing about this alley is there was a beat poet named Bukowski, which some of you may be familiar with. There's a bar in this alley where he wrote the, the book Barfly that the movie was made out of. 
So if you go to this, it's kind of a famous place, but there's all kinds of cool art there now. I was asked to put a piece there. So I came up with this thing called war paint. My idea was that um, anyone that used paint to further a social cause, that was their war paint. And I kind of took the idea of, um, oh man, I can't remember the guy's name. He had a guitar and it says this machine, uh, fights fascism or kills fascism or something like that. Woody Guthrie, that's it. So I kind of took that vibe and kind of said, they used this product to fight racism, colonial and oppression. And there was another guy, a friend of mine up in Denver who did something with spray cans too. Greg Deal, he's a great artist. So he kind of had a vibe of a, a spray can too that I definitely um, took inspiration from him. He's a great, great artist you should look up. Um, so one thing that I noticed as I was, um, Watching the movie Star Wars, which was big um, for me and anyone of my generation, was I was always looking at the correlation of Star Wars and the treatment of native people by the government. It's like, it's about these little rebels that were ragtag and they were fighting this evil empire that was coming over, trying to take over um, different parts of the universe. So I correlated the two. So I like to mix Star Wars with native imagery a lot because of that movie. Um, this is a this is a piece called my great great grandmother's a Hopi Indian princess. So as you can see, the hairstyles from these Hopi women are um, strikingly sim similar to Carrie Fisher's Fisher's Princess Leia image. So a little blending there. Uh, this is a piece I did. I just got a Starbucks cup, and I thought, oh, I think I could draw on this and manipulate it. So using a white, um, I think it was a like a paint pen and then just a magic marker how it's kind of made this little jingle dress girl so i also make my own stickers um are you guys seeing am i trying to move this thing here can you are you seeing this bar move right here do y'all see that move no okay so these are my stickers um i just put them all on a helmet and gave that away on my instagram page this is called um Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, the traditional version. So it's a little bit different than the version you probably saw growing up. It had a little bit different ending. Um, let's see, I'm gonna try to move this so you can see. I'm not sure what y'all are able to see. So I was fortunate enough to get to go to uh, Paris, France to show a short film that I wrote and directed called Ronnie Bodine. And while I was there, I went to this um, place called the Arc de Triomphe. So if you look, you can see there's my thumb and finger holding up this little Lego sign, this little Lego man. And I was just making it look like he was walking through the city. This was actually a hard picture to get. There was people like, like it looks like, oh, you're just in a parking lot, but actually it's two roads going and everyone wants to take a picture. This is one spot you can really take good pictures. So everyone was yelling at me, get out of the way. I'm like, I'm trying to take, anyway, it was just a little harder to do that looks. This piece is called, I think we're gonna need a bigger canoe. So famous um, Jaws line, if you ever saw the movie Jaws, there's a famous line where they say, I think we're gonna need a bigger boat. So I took that and I kind of made this little image here. So this is a piece that I had put on canvas. Um, I didn't Photoshop these and all I did was color them. Those, those buildings were already there. I believe they're boarding schools. They reminded me of the Monopoly game. So I put the Monopoly man there. I think it says a lot in one image. These are Fox and Mox by Dr. Sue. These are just Indians watching Indians. Um, I tried to make it look like they were at a drive-in. I took a cell phone, put an image up and had these little guys watching. So growing up, there were certain movies that I felt like natives were smart and they were funny. And so I decided to make a night out of these fictional characters where they all go out. Um, you may recognize some of these guys from left to right. From Dancing with Wolves, we got Graham Greene. Um, right next to him is uh, Chief Dan George from the Outlaw Josie Wells, or Outlaw Josie Wells. Um, one Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. A lot of people get the next one um, wrong. It, it, they get the right actor, it's Filbert, but it's Filbert, it's not Smoke Signals. This is from Powell Highway. And then of course at the end we do have Smoke Signals. I'm going to um, see what the next one is here. 
Oh, okay. So speaking of Pow Wow Highway, this is, um, sorry, I'm trying to get this image to go right on my phone here. I'm trying to send it to me. So I love movies and I love action figures. So when I was growing up, I would have action figures from like Star Wars, um, Clash of the Titans, all kinds of, any movies, Dukes of Hazzard, just whatever I liked, I'd be able to get an action figure out, but they didn't have one of native stuff. So I decided to make my own. What I did was I took a um, Simpsons doll and a Sharpie and I colored his hair black. And then I took the shirt, I took an image from the internet of Filbert and I printed it and I cut the shirt out and glued that on in the little belt buckle. Then I went to the dollar store and got a uh, Batman because it had this really big plastic piece that I could put on top. And then I made the background in Photoshop, printed it out on cardstock, and I was able to make my own action figure. Now I will say it looks better online. In real life, you know, it's a flimsy piece of paper and the guy sliding around, but it, it looks pretty good, I think, at least on, on the computer here. So this was, I took the background of a magazine, Native People's Magazine of Jim Thorpe, and then I pieced together different images to make a Lego, to make his own action figure. If you'd look, I didn't do the C very well. I was trying to cut it out. I would do better today. Now, back then, I, I didn't do quite as good. And again, this is one of those things, if you see it in real life, you'll see that I, the, the acrylic on the, it doesn't, it looks cool in a photo, but in real life, like the shoulder pads and everything, it's like a bunch of globbed up paint that dried out. And, um, but it, it, I, I think it's still kind of cool. This is one I made of Billy Mills, who we saw earlier. This is a little custom Lego that I made of him. I was calling these all action figures. So this, I just wanted to see cool action figures of our native heroes. Um, this is the Stay Puft Marshmallow Man from the movie Ghostbusters. That was really big when we were growing up with me and my brothers. So I just, that's why I wanted to make this image. Just, it's just a memory I had growing up. There was a movie called The Warriors. Uh, it came out a little bit before my time, but I was still able to see the poster when I got older. So I decided to put all these native people in there for The Warriors. I was asked to do a piece in Oklahoma City. So I did this one in the Banksy style. It says, this space for rent. And then I wrote the word not over it. Again, we have, I, this is the um, world's greatest race. So we have Jim Thorpe, and he's going to be racing the Flash here. This is that famous picture. If this was wider, you would see his feet. I was fortunate enough to be in um, Washington, D.C., and I was giving a talk, and I Googled Native American people in D.C. This came up, I think it was taken in 1903, and I was able to rip it out, and I walked around D.C. until I found the spot that it was, and I was able to match it up. This is Rock'em Sock'em Robots, the Battle of the Little Bighorn Edition. Again, um, more of a nostalgic toy. I never actually owned one of these. I thought they were cool, but we never really could afford these. But um, so I kind of made this. I was watching a video and it said the nun, the nun bun. And it was a Mother Teresa in the shape of a cinnamon bun. And then I saw someone saw Elvis on a tortilla, Jesus on their pancakes. And I was like, why is no one seeing native people in their food? So I decided to fix that. I call this the toast of Indian country. It was made, I can't remember now. I think, I don't remember how many toast it was, but um, yeah, it's, it's a pretty simple technique called the grid technique. And it, it is a technique that before COVID happened, I would travel around and teach people this technique. These are Mindians. This is, um, the Incredible Hulk, Indigenous Hulk gets mad when treaties are broken. You see the guys here, he's reading this newspaper, treaties are broken, and he turns into the Hulk. This is Pow Wow Mixtape Volume 2. This is a rug that I make. I don't physically make it, a company makes it, but it's a rug that I designed. And uh, yeah, I think it's pretty cool. Um, I used to make mixtapes when I was younger, so I just kind of wanted to get a throwback to that. These are some fry bread, um, <laughs> fry bread chapsticks. And I think it says fry bread grease chapsticks. 
Um, and then over here it says, we, quit, we crisscrossed the country going res to res, community to community, stopping off at your grandma's and auntie's houses, collecting only the best and keenest fry bread grease across Turtle Island. 100% real. It's actually vanilla, though, I think, if you get it. These were emojis that we made. That at the time we made these, we wanted to put these on phones, but this is before I knew that there was a monopoly on phone. You have to build a keyboard. I don't know how to do that. If you're out there and you know how to make a keyboard and these emojis, let me know. Uh, I took a sign that said wrong way and I turned it into strong medicine. These are some skate decks that I make. I actually, um, I would say 98% of the people that buy my skate decks, they use them as what they call wall, wall hangers, meaning that they just, they hang them on their wall as art. I do have some brand, a brand new skate deck that's gonna be released next week. I only made 250 of them. Once they're gone, they're gone. They're all signed in numbers. So be sure to come back to my website to check that out. Um, so it gets really cold in the plains, so I did this one um, by mixing an image from Empire Strikes Back. That's an Ewok, just chilling out there, doing his thing. They're probably doing a trade right here. Um, Godzilla helps fight against the colonizers, so you got these alien ships coming down. Godzilla's there, which... Um, um, when I was growing up, it was a little before my time, but I was able to see some reruns of this guy in a big rubber suit that played Godzilla. And what I really liked was the behind the scenes where they would show that it was full, like, um, there was a guy in a suit and they built buildings that were scaled to him, which I thought was so cool. Like these buildings that were like five feet tall and this guy was walking through them. So this may look like an Etch-a-Sketch and indeed that's what it's supposed to look like. But if you look closely, you'll see that it's actually a canvas. And then I put Mod Podge lids on it and just drew on it. And it says Ledger Sketch instead of Etch a Sketch. Um, this was a street sign that I took, and I, it said no parking. So I was like, oh, that's kind of cool. Let me. I put these TPs and a, um, a totem pole on it. It says no parking. This was a ledger I did called Quarter Horse. It was supposed to look like one of those horses that you see in front of a. Um, Grocery store, this guy's taking his son there. So that's what that is. This is Indian Up from the movie Up. If you look in the background, you'll see uh, there's a little teepee back there. Forgot about this one, this is really cool. I probably need to make a print of this. It looks really neat. If you own this painting, contact me. I need, may need a picture of it. This is a piece I did with Summer Peters. Um, she's Ojibwe. I painted Wonder Woman and sent it to her and she did the beadwork on this the cuff and the, um, the headband. Um, so it, it's hard to tell, but that's actually a full-size buffalo. It's about that wide. And what I did is I took a buffalo head and I wrapped it in tape, seven, they, no, I'm sorry, 11 pieces, 11 rolls of tape. I put saran wrap on it first, tape, 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 tape. Then I was able to cut it off and put it back together and it probably weighs less than two pounds. It's just a big piece of tape that looks like a skull. And then um, I put some lights in it. And um, I was so excited to show people that that's actually not the wall, that is the floor. And I just put some pictures on the floor and took the photo like this, just to make it look like it was hanging on the wall. This is a shirt that I did. It was a free giveaway from Van Skateboard Company. And it was part of the All Nations Skate Jam. I think they gave away 200 of these shirts to the first 200 people that showed up. I had, um, I wanted to, I saw a video about this turtle that had plastic, a straw stuck in his nose. So I started thinking about the waste and plastic there in the ocean. I thought, what's the most famous ocean picture? It's probably the Great Wave. So I put these um, plastics in it. These were some Jordan number ones that I just, I saw like on, a YouTube that someone had a tutorial on how to make them look like a comic book, so I wanted to try myself, so that's what that is. This is um, actually, it's forced perspective. There's no Photoshop involved here. That's actually a toy car, and little toy guys are only about this big, but if you look at this line right here, that's the, the cement chair that they're on, and this is the road, and I noticed that they were the same color, so I thought I could take this photo, and, and it would like, be an illusion, something called forced perspective. These are the Ninja Turtles shaking their shells. I just took a um, Charles Schultz 
Peanuts cartoon, Charlie Brown, and I just changed the, um, what they were saying. I thought it was apropos. So this is um, Invaders. So it's like the Space Invaders, but I changed the Space Invaders here to like Columbus's ship. I have these guys shooting at them. This is a um, backpack that I designed for Kyrie Irvin through N7. Kyrie Irvin at the time played for Boston. I believe he's with New York now, but he is Standing Rock. So um, made this for him. I was doing a live paint at this um, community up in Canada. So I took their language and made this, I painted this while I was there, redfish, bluefish, red, um, one fish, two fish, redfish, bluefish. This is the first Avenger, Captain Native America. I took Captain America and mixed it with a sitting bull image. And you can't really tell on here, but the star, I put beadwork on that, gave him a medicine bundle here and a medicine wheel to his left there. And then I changed the shield to a buckskin type shield. Oh, there we go, a little close up of the little beadwork, little medicine wheel there. This was just a chair that I found on Craigslist that I painted. This is the Unbroken Treaty action figure, American exceptionalism not included, and it's Unbroken Treaty, that's why there's nothing in it. The guy on the left says, freedom of religion? And the other guy's like, of course, but you see the little asterisk, and if you look at the bottom, it says terms and conditions may apply. Collect all, 500. Oh, you have to look sideways, but this is a piece that I made using Rubik's Cubes. I think there's 500 Rubik's Cubes. No, yeah, 500 Rubik's Cubes to make this one. Oh, hard to see this one. Let me see if I can move this. That is uh, Godzilla. No, 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 King Kong. This is a piece I did. It was a really a book that I really liked when I was a kid called Where the Wild Things Are with little Max. He'd go see these wild things. So in this, Max is telling the wild things a scary story. He's like, you're not going to believe you think that's scary. Check this out. And he starts telling the story, and it freaks the wild things out. So this is a piece I made out of 20,000 dice, the little dice like that you roll in board games. And that's me building that. Crazy. Oh my gosh. There's the finished product. Um, I think it was nine foot, nine and a half feet tall by six and a half feet wide. This is the piece, this is the last one I did. I think I did this right before COVID, I think. It was at the Sundance Film Festival. In fact, I haven't even brought it home yet. I think this might have been. 15,000 dice. I think it weighs close to 800 pounds because it's solid cedar uh, for the frame. It's in um, Salt Lake City, so I need to try to get that home next. Okay, so I, I would love to show you some of my work that I do that's my film related work. So I'm going to show you a video here. Sorry, sorry, sorry. So this is like a little seven minute video. Um, I think you'll dig it. Oh. Action. Aki, it told me Charlie had talk. What's it for, Katimi? It told me Charlie had talk. Oh man. She didn't talk to me. She didn't talk I your party, huh?
So that particular uh, piece is now, if you happen to be flying and on your, if you're on Alaska Airlines, you can watch that on Alaska Airlines for the next, I think, year. This is, um, this is one I did, uh, it's stop motion. It's like, I think, I think it's a minute long. It's pretty self-explanatory. Let me see if it'll load up here for us. All right, here we go. This is the third time this month someone's vandalized the top of the general. We better call the law, cousin. Maybe it's because of all the baggage that comes with that flag. That's a flag? We thought it was just a cool design with stars and whatnot. Uncle Jesse, did you know it was a flag? Uh, boys, I got some chores to tend to. You know, a chicken and a bread pan chicken out. Most folks that know a little history realize the states of the South that fly this flag were seceding to keep slaves. Now, wait a minute, Roscoe. We got Ken that fought on the side of the South. They wasn't for no slavery. They was for states' rights. Well, someone should have told your ancestors that because they thought it was about slavery. In fact, they included it in their secession letter. The red in this chart shows how many words were devoted to the issue of slavery. Look out, cousin. The storm's washed out the bridge. Hang on. So that was a little stop motion I did. Um, that was just like a little fun um, little stop motion. Um, I think we can show two more here really quick. Let me decide which ones will be good. Um, let's go with first contact. This is all stop motion I did with Ryan Redcorn and Paul Snyder, um, all using um, construction paper. And we come along, ki sam sananak, wuchi akoma kitahan. Piyong, kwa wat ki wuchi kiwan, kwa pam kuki. Wa yu ti yok anak, ta we katamawank. Katanai, mata kawahoa yuski tompak, a pabo ko wa ata nis mashoi. Haki mas mam ki wawa kanichonan. Kataya mawa wa kwanonak aki ayatu wayak kwa aki o kusawak i mantu. In kakiha tat wuchi wi tapotan sayakat matan ayutama winak. Matamai kati kwanonak. Piyosh in wachonamak pai sashan tiakwash wo sho kwanawak. Tanit ni mata unun, tapin i awash wuchi na natai, ni tato jakwan i. Wachonamak mashoyash. Mashoyash, akwani wokwat amasaswak. Na yashawak, ayanamawik nataya sanawak. Chakwan awi machi chakwan maskawa vachak. Naks kat mata apawak o kawe tabatamawak. Okay, cool, cool, cool. And then we'll check out, how does this work? Okay. We're gonna check out one called the Indian Tourist. This was all made um, using cardboard boxes, which I think it turned out pretty cool. Um, I'll let you be the judge of that. Thank you. 
clean. Last one. This is kind of a neat one to me because I made it for like um, maybe $12. It was a, one of the first things I ever made. And the idea that you could make something and someone would dig it. I think the Smithsonian actually bought this from me. And that's when I thought, man, I could start making things. I got accepted in all kinds of film festivals. That was the first thing I ever made, and I think that it makes us to the end of, uh, I think I went past my time a little bit, I'm not sure. So, but yeah, that's the stuff I'm making. Right now I'm working on a graphic novel, a comic book called Little Red's Detectives. Um, I think it's really cool. We're finishing the artwork today for that. I also uh, made my own little notebooks. Those are out right now. I have a few left, but I'm um, doing that and some paintings that I work on. But yeah, so anyway, I think that comes, is it um, the museum, but is there something I'm supposed to do now or anything? Are we? I can't hear you. I can't hear the museum. Sorry, one sec. Oh, cool. Sorry, we just want to make sure we weren't feedbacking on you, making horrible yeah. feedback noises. Yeah, um, no, thank you so much, Stephen. Um, let me, um, I wanted to see if anyone had any questions, but I think you are pretty much killed it. So thank you so much for sharing your art with us. It yeah, was amazing. if anyone has a question, I totally am open to answer. Yeah. Thank you so much. Um, yeah, and everyone, I just wanted to say, um, uh, Stephen will be also doing another workshop with us on, um, I believe it's Saturday at. Oh yeah, this is yes. gonna be good. So yeah. doing Go kind of a, a simple Bob Ross thing where I'll teach you how to. In fact, I was kind of doodling a little bit here. But I'm gonna teach you how to just draw an Indian head. It's something that I kind of like to paint a lot from profile. I think I can teach you to do it, even if you don't have any artistic skill. It's a very simple technique. Um, probably when you're growing up, you saw those books were like, draw a circle. Now draw another circle. Put a, I'll be doing that. It's going to be a painting. You're going to paint with me. In one hour, you'll have this painting done. Um, you could do it with magic markers, pencils. I'm going to be using acrylic paint. And um, I'm going to probably use four colors, black, honey brown, maybe a red, orange. Yeah, pretty simple stuff. Um, but if you have some crayons, pencils, magic markers, it'll work. And I promise you, it's going to be so simple. Yeah, I'm really excited. Um, I, I'm personally not an artist myself, so I'm really excited to attempt this. Um, so uh, I also want to just let everyone know um, that we, all, we have uh, two more things coming up today. Uh, during the cultural celebration, we have um, Miss Catherine Ald, um, actually doc Dr. Catherine Ald from NWA Space doing um, a presentation on um, Native American astronomy and also how to make sun daggers. So um, that's coming up here actually in 10 minutes at 2.30. And then at 6, uh, we're going to be showing um, Pearl Carter Scott, a daredevil who dared to dream. She was a Chickasaw um, aviator and just incredible well, uh, Native American woman trailblazer. So that is coming up today. Um, I hope to see you all back at Stephen's next workshop and the rest of our events this weekend. Um, but other than that, I tell Stephen we'd like to invite him back. Yeah. Him What's up, Stephen? Um, how, is there a way for me to let people know about that painting mm -hmm. thing? If y'all could send me what I can post for that and I can let some people know about it. Absolutely. We can okay. do that. All right. Thank you right. so much. Thank you, everyone. Thanks so much. Good night. Good night.